Welcome back. Here's what you may have missed. I'm doing a complete service on this beautiful Volcane Cricut alarm watch. The disassembly went very well and I cleaned all of the parts in my new vintage Elma watch cleaner. That video is live and I'll share a link in the comments if you'd like to watch. I was working on the reassembly when I lost concentration and made a terrible mistake. Let's make sure we still have proper movement. And I think we do. Final snuggin. I, what the, all right, that was a really bad sound. That was the snapping sound heard around the world. I found a compatible replacement part on eBay and ended up spending $85, including tax and delivery. My first order of business was doing a side-by-side -side comparison with the old part, and it does indeed look like it is the correct replacement. Unfortunately, I think I see a problem with the new fork. Can you spot what it might be? I'm talking about the shellac that holds the pallet stone in place. It looks like much of the shellac on my new part has flaked off, and I'm concerned that one of the pallet stones might break loose while the watch is running. I'll give the old shellac a light rubbing with isopropyl alcohol. Shellac dissolves in alcohol, but very slowly in isopropyl alcohol, so this will be a good test to check the strength of the glue. If there's enough shellac and I can melt it with the alcohol, that might be enough to hold the jewels in place. No, the old shellac is flaking away. So I kind of suspected something like that. So let's clean it up and apply some new shellac. Yay, I get to use one of my vintage watchmaking tools and fire. I've only done this once before and it was on a pallet fork for a pocket watch, which was a lot bigger. But fingers crossed, this needs to be done. So let's see how it goes. Okay, we're gonna give this a dip in one dip. Next is we're gonna put on some fresh shellac. Blonde de-waxed shellac. I don't think we'll end up using the whole bag. In fact, we just need a tiny little bit. These pieces are more than we need for uh, putting on a pallet stone. So what I'm going to do is melt a little piece and then stretch it into a thread so I can have a more consistent diameter piece. And so I'm just gonna pick this kind of small one here and uh, We'll see how much of a thread we can get out of it. And so here's the drill. I'm going to take the little piece that we broke off and just kind of hold it near the flame. See if we can get them to melt. Not in the flame, just near the flame. Okay. And now with him nice and gooey, let's just grab the other side of him. And let's see if we can pull him into a thread. Yeah, just like that. And now what we'll do is we'll be able to break off a few segments of that thread and use those pieces for uh, setting the stones on the, uh, the new pallet fork. Okay, we'll cover him up for now. This tool is a pallet fork warmer. And the way it works is it has a brass base which you can hold in the flame and that will work like a heat sink and evenly distribute the warmth 
into the pallet fork, and that pallet fork is clamped right here into that platform. The warmer is grooved to allow you to get some heat separation between the two different sides of the pallet fork. And when you have the fork in place, it clamps down just like that. Before we get started, this is a look at the old pallet fork and you can see approximately how much shellac is holding in the jewels. And this is a look at the new pallet fork, which I removed the shellac from. So the first thing we want to do is put the new pallet fork in the pallet fork warmer. Okay, we're making good contact with the warmer. And let's grab, grab our little piece of caramel here. Let's see how flexible or brittle it is. And did you see that? It just snapped off and that's fine. We'll start on this side. All right, that's promising. So we can keep it on there now. Long enough to melt it. Two, three, four, 16, 17. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. But that looks like it's way more than we need, actually. Fourteen, fifteen. One, two, fifteen. Okay, we're gonna give this like a 20 count. I just wanna make sure the bubble isn't standing up too high. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can get it, this to flow even more. Okay, I will clean up the excess uh, once we get this out. Oh, that's warm, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna need to heat this up because I shellacked it to the warmer. Okay. We'll let this cool and then I'll see if I can clean it up a little bit uh, just to get some of the runoff but without jeopardizing the integrity of those uh, pallet stones. So here is the uh, original part and that's how much shellac was on the original part and here's what we ended up with. So when I compare them side by side it doesn't really seem like I've got too much on there. Well, I'm confident that those pallet stones aren't going anywhere for a long time to come. I can pull off some of the loose threads and then I'm going to use a little denatured alcohol to clean up the overflow, which dissolves shellac much more quickly than isopropyl alcohol. Let's see, is that enough to melt it? Okay. 
This is the side of the fork opposite the shellac where the runoff flowed under the fork. It's cleaning up nicely without affecting the shellac on the other side. I want to make sure the shellac bubble isn't sticking up too far and that the amounts on both sides of the fork is balanced, and I think it looks good. While I'm here, I can see that there's some debris on the faces of the pallet stones, so I'll clean them with the alcohol before doing a final rinse in the one dip and then treating the fork in Fix-A-Drop, which will keep the oil in place once I reinstall the part and lubricate the pallet stones and the escape wheel. I appreciate you watching this video, and if you haven't already, please take a minute to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss the suspenseful moment when I try the new pallet fork in the watch to see if it works. I'm Mike, the channel is Watch With Mike. I hope that by watching me learn, you're feeling empowered to hone your own watchmaking skills. Please leave your comments in the section below, and I look forward to our next time together.